Beautiful. Thank you, Sai. Come and take a seat. <laughs> you comfortable? Yoga chairs. Yeah. Check on the headphones. How are you, my man? Great to have you here. Ah, uh, it's good to be here. Absolutely. In the stew room. Yeah. 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 How's life been? Ah, uh, life's been wild. Uh-huh. And challenging and uh interesting and uh a lot of fun. Fun is my my barometer. Big of, tour uh, you just came off of, huh? <laughs> Yeah. How was Europe? You were mainly in Europe and Asia? Uh well the, the tour was Europe. Yeah. Yeah. So I was in um I was in Austria and Switzerland and Malta, um, Holland, yeah, a bunch of European countries. Mm-hmm. I, I loved it. My I'm a sort of lifestyle person. I like to enjoy how I move and what I do. Mm-hmm. So very much, very much enjoyed that. You know? Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And then back here for family reasons, taking care of your mom and Yeah, yeah. Mum had a had a car accident, so yeah. I'm kinda here for for her and uh yeah this is my break (laughs) yeah and this is your homeland isn't it this is where you were born right yeah Yeah. i'm 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 from perth originally grew up here i went to school in um claremont and then swanbourne and uh studied at university western australia and uh even blew my first note on a didgeridoo here as well so yeah you've got quite the story from there you're in medicine school were you not and then took an india trip Right. Well, yeah. Um, hey, it's a it's a good story. Go but... into that story. I love it. <laughs> I've heard it a few times, but I love it every time. Yeah. So, yeah, I was I, w- I was academic uh, as my principal kind of attribute that I had in life, and um, and <clears throat> and uh, so yeah, I, st- I went to uni and I studied um, mathematics originally and physics, and then I went into medicine. And I did a couple of years of medicine, but my passion on, you know, my deeper passion actually was Indian spirituality, you know, and my, my family had gone to India when I was 16 and then 17. And then in between each of the years of studying at uni, I kept up the tradition and I'd spend three months of the year in, in India, you know, so I'd have nine months studying and then three months um, like diving into the whole Indian spirituality, into meditating and kirtan and chanting Om, and then traveling around temples and meeting, you know, all the characters, the colorful characters you meet. And um, between second and third year medicine, I basically had uh, an exp- uh, three a three month trip to India, which just kind of got better and better and better and better. And um, I ended up, the, the kind of magic thing started in Hampi, which was just like a total ruin place that no one knew about back then. So people were just camping in the ruins and and this kind of every day um, I got happier, you know, and I don't know what was really happening. Something just happened where I was like, wow, I can't believe it. Every day kind of was better than the one before. And then I ended up on Om Beach in Gokana and um, – and and the this process just kept continuing and crazy synchronicities were happening and anyway um and then uh yeah the kind of peak of it all there was actually two peaks tw- twin peaks <laughs> <laughs> but it was totally it wasn't like the, the series <laughs> you could probably make a series out of it huh? <laughs> yes <laughs> Oh, I'd love a TV show about your life. That'd be the best. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, life has two sides. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, and I and I basically had um, uh, a very profound mystical experience um, out of a psychedelic experience, and and I and during this night, I basically. Uh, it's pretty. It sounds pretty out there, but at the time it was pretty factual. I I relived the evolution of consciousness from um, a cell th- uh, to a multiple cells, wow. and then through the whole spectrum of the animal kingdom, through being like a you know a rat and then a dog and then 
a whole range of monkeys and then into this kind of caveman like um it was like consciousness it was consciousness evolving over time and i relived this evolution and 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 in the middle of the night i i when i was in this kind of caveman mentality i just was like i had this feeling like wow i can go anywhere you know and i just looked around and it was like three in the morning on on beach and and there was just these big rocky hills everywhere and i was just like right and i just went and just went we just got all primal and climbed up all these rocks so i got to this top point like the high point which wasn't very high but <laughs> i was high <laughs> <laughs> and and uh and suddenly the whole earth started resonating it just went boom and it came from the horizon and it was i was on om beach and i just was like i'm hearing the om you know wow. i'm hearing the resonance of the earth and when i and when i heard that that sound i was like that sounds like a didgeridoo wow. you know and in that sa- in that moment it was like a piece of um stardust fell out of the stars above and dropped through my whole being and made everything every single part wow. of myself stand in a line and i realized that i was a didgeridoo player i was like I'm a didgeridoo player and in the same moment I realised a method for how to play which combined everything that I believe in into a single unit. And uh, had you played the didgeridoo before then? No. No. Never played, Isn't never interested, amazing? nothing. Yeah. yeah, it was It was like, a, like I'd seen a few buskers with the didge and whatever. I saw my uncle playing when I was a kid mm-hmm. and, yeah, I just never... You know, it never, I never was attracted to it as an instrument. And, and, but it, but what happened for me was that this experience, it was like, I was like, wow, didgeridoo is the ultimate way to meditate on the om. Cause with the voice, you have to stop and start and stop and start. But this thing just makes the sound and it just mm-hmm. goes, you know. And then I was into rebirthing and therapy since my teenage years because my mother was a was a therapist, originally a rebirther and then a primal therapist. So I kind of had this understanding of the power of breath and I was like, wow, it's a breathing tool. So it's got the om, it's a breathing tool. And then I was like, wow, anything I, I feel I can express with my voice. So it's, it's got this cathartic element of just being able to go like, wow, you know, you know, make any kind of human sound and it goes through the instrument. And then, and then it had the tonality, all of the musical possibilities of a sitar because it basically is a drone or instrument mm-hmm. and your voice can make any note. So, and then it was from my country, you know, it was from Australia, you know, and I've always had a deep love of the land. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, and I just realized if I put all of that together, I could develop my own practice and use this instrument to go inside myself and and I was I was really fascinated by Jungian psychology in my teenage years as well also at uni I was always reading up and studying and and I was like wow the collective unconscious I can access information from the inside you know so I don't need a teacher and and I basically realized all of that in an instant wow yeah <laughs> yeah. There were pieces you shared in that that I hadn't heard before. So thank you for sharing once again. It's yeah, it's, it's expanding. I mm. kind of yeah, you need the right spot right. to kind of give all the details. Yeah, and that's some of the details. Amazing. And how old were you at that point? I was mm-hmm. twenty. Yeah, yeah. And then that was it. You left medical school. You became a didgeridoo player. You just committed from there. Was that? Well, the commitment. I uh, I basically. Um, you know, in that experience, I, you know, realized my, that I was a didgeridoo player and in the original peak, um, I, 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 um, realized that I, I have to follow my heart in every moment. So that was the, the didgeridoo was sort of, was kind of secondary to that original experience of going like, no, you can say, you can trust 
you can follow your heart and you can just move like that, you know. And after I had that experience, I went and sat, did it, I did five weeks silent retreat in an ashram and just went and just meditated and just was like, I'm not losing this, what I've learned. Mm. I want to integrate, you know. And then as my path was to follow my heart and to, to have the courage to follow my heart single-pointedly, I also went back into my life and I went back into med school and then I, I let things go step right. by step over nine months. It took me to, 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 to you know, uh, it was two or three months to get out of medicine and that was literally just my heart said, go between two lectures. Instead of going to the next lecture, I just took the road. Mm. You know, and it just kind of went off like a like a layer, and I never thought about it again. What a blessing to experience that at at such a young age! I think with all the distractions and all the uh, societal pressures at at late teens and then twenty to to have that clarity is such a a blessing at that age. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of. I mean, for me, it was so wildly overpowering that mm. that in a way. People said, people would say, oh, it's, it, you made us, you know, you, how did you make such a strong decision? But the decision was made because right. the answer was obvious, you know. And, and so it was, it was, you know, it was like, and in a way I kind of look back and go, wow, always had this burning desire to, um, to know, to have an experiential basis for life. Mm-hmm. And it was fascinating because I can't, I, at, at uni I studied and studied and I had, I was full of facts, but I felt like none of these facts felt like they sat in the knowing part of me, you know, and it, and it was like, and, and then I'd go to India for three months and I'd be like, I feel like I'm accessing the knowing part, right. you know, and, yeah. and then I, and then I go a step further and go like, I just went, boom, I don't want to know facts. I want to know what I know. You know, and when I started playing Digi, it was a huge process mm-hmm. of just going, switching off. I switched off all my beliefs. I just mm-hmm. went, wow, until I was just like, all right, I reset myself. Mm-hmm. Officially right now I believe in nothing and then I presented myself to life, trusting my heart and I said, I want to know what, what's true and I, want to, and I want to live life from a perspective of knowing, not from um, any other system of belief or ideas of what should I do and what should be the right thing. So, so yeah. And then I just allowed my beliefs to kind of Mm -hmm. click on as the, as the, as you know, as the, all the experiences happened. Yeah. Yeah. So would you say that that peak experience that was spontaneous? Were you like intending for it? Were you welcoming it? Were you like working on it or it just happened that moment on Olm beach? Uh, I believe I was silently praying for it my whole life. Yeah. You know. But in terms of like willpower and intentionality, were you like, was there any of that? <laughs> like in, in retrospect, like thinking of how you were then. Yeah. Or was it just a total spontaneous? Look, I always come back to um, in, that, in that moment, it was just totally a spontaneous mm-hmm. unfolding. Um, but when I look back, but of back, course it was meant to be all that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, of course it was just meant to be. <laughs> but but the funny thing is, well, the, that was the funny thing, and the not funny thing is, um, just there's there's one of the Sanskrit prayers. Maybe you know it, but it means the yearning draws the light, mm-hmm. and 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 um, and what I came to was that, wow, all those times in my life that I had a burning desire to know something Mm. else and to kind of understand the deeper fabric of reality, all of those times, um, there was a a deep and true yearning in me to know, to know something else. And I look back and go, all that time I was praying, you know, and I think we all have those processes. We all have, you know, and now I'm conscious of it. Mm-hmm. So, like, when I'm when I want something, I allow the wanting to be separate from the process of getting. Yeah. You know, and I just I allow myself to want, mm-hmm. just to be like, I want this. You know, and to acknowledge the want in its fullness, yeah. and then release it and allow the greater intelligence to 
work stuff out. Awesome. Uh, with all of your time in India, uh, as you would be aware of, a lot of the yogic practices and Eastern practices have a lot of attention on um, burning up desires and mm. burning up those wants and those attractions and aversions. I think with our Western mind, we take it a little bit too literally and mm. the, the often seekers looking for that kind of clarity and insight and, and freedom kind of quote unquote, throw the baby out with the bathwater and <laughs> kind of suppress all those desires and those yearnings. And mm. often it can, it can kind of, um, it can be quite disastrous in many ways. Like what we've seen in mm -hmm. like um, in the churches and whatnot of like uh, repressing sexual energy too early, uh, renouncing mm. everything prematurely and then it leaks out in like really yeah. toxic ways. Um, it seems like you've got a really healthy balance of really honoring your, your desires and your wants mm. without uh, running rampant on it. It's been really cool to witness. Yeah. Well, I had a pretty major introduction to India, you know, in my teenage years when I went with my, my uh, family and I, mm. and I had this kind of, I had a very potent experience of, of being connected to that story and that uh, mythology. Mm. And it's always really meant something to mm. me, you know, And and originally when I did get into it, I got into it in a very strict way mm. where, where I kind of put a lot of structures and onto myself and in a way um, took all the teachings that I read and, and built my own cage out of them, you know. Right. And then I and then and then I really cornered myself into that. And the whole did you do thing mm. and this whole like upheaval was just a massive rebellion from my spirit going, mm. it's not like this, you know. It's about nete nete. <laughs> <laughs> so I just did. Um, so I just did his first neti jal neti before he, he neti neti. <laughs> he got here and he was a bit congested, and we did our first. I popped you a nete yeah. jal neti cherry. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and he's free in his sinuses. For those of you that don't know what jal neti is, it's a um. It's like a nasal rinse pot. You can find them everywhere in pharmacies now and health food shops. But this was his first time, and yeah. he's as clear as a clear as a whistle now. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> But you're not whistling. Yeah. And uh, nete nete. Uh, I remember we were doing a class together, and yes. we, were, we were doing a lot of um, nete nete, which yeah. means not this, not this, not this, not that. Yeah. And uh, gradually disidentifying from. What well, we tend to personalize our ego, our persona, yeah. our stuff, and getting in touch with what's real, who we truly are, and that really hit home for you. You're like, oh, like that. That's 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 what feeds me, and and then that yeah. opened up a really beautiful conversation about India mm. and what you had studied there, and Ramana mm. Maharshi's uh, mm. teachings of nete nete, and yeah, not this. And um, I think that's another common teaching that that can be gripped, like. It's such a fine balance of like getting in touch with who we truly are. I'm not because we can't really think about who we truly are or conceptualize it or verbalize so we can go through everything that we're not. Mm. Not my body, not my mind, mm. not my ego, not my money, not, none of this. Mm. <sighs> Disidentify. And then what's left is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> or everything. Uh, yeah, or everything, whichever <laughs> way you look at it. And then the balance of bringing it into where nothing and where everything. But yeah. this is just a vehicle. And um, Yeah, I, I, I love this process. My, out of all of the, you know, different p pathways that I've studied and investigated mm -hmm. and practiced, the, the neti neti is the one that sits with me just yeah, with – my mind just does that, mm -hmm. you know, if it's, if it's kind of like, it's not an effort to discriminate in that way. Right. You know, it's, it just, if, as long as I'm, you know, um, you know, in a, in a, in the space mm -hmm. and it just, you know, cuts away and I have had those, those, uh, delicious yeah. experiences of, I don't know, those experiences that you can't, mm. Uh, you can't really wrap words around. And do you find it's helping you like that technique? It is a technique, I guess. Um, 
in these current challenges of caretaking for your mom and uh, uh, you were kind of in a good rhythm in, in Byron Bay and just after your tour and it was a kind of unexpected trip over here to, to take care of your mom. Do you, do you find uh, that technique helps you to be fully present for your mom and just... I, yeah, look, I, I, from the first time I went to India till... 20 years later, when I was in my mid-30s, I had a very strong uh, journey with the whole Indian spirituality and all the different, and the, you know, and it, and it definitely had a tangible kind of theme and direction and thread at all of the moments, you know. And, but my um, serpent ate its tail and, and I just kind of burst out the other side and just was like, wow, I don't believe in anything mm. anymore. You know, I don't. It's not that I don't believe in anything. It's just my beliefs are integrated into me and I respond from that position of of knowing what I know, you know. And I don't pretend to have vast knowledge or anything, but I do have the ability to bounce a situation directly off mm-hmm. myself without interfering um, with a belief system in the middle, yeah. you know. I feel very integrated like that. So I just I love being human. I believe in being human. I believe that we are built in a beautiful way and that if we can just authentically be ourselves and respond in the way that we do honestly respond, then that's all we can actually do and the rest is kind of getting in the way. So like I I, I feel like I don't really use any systems yeah. anymore, you know, it's even though yeah. well, you know, I might, if I feel you know, something in my heart that I want to clear, I might use the Gayatri Mantra. Right. You know, if, I, if I'm if i like energetically need to liberate myself, I'll do Qigong. You know, I have all these different practices, mm. but um, I don't specifically draw on anything, you know, in that no, way. Understand. Yeah. 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 And that's the point of all these practices actually is to like to integrate it like you're saying in which it's just kind of happening. Mm. It becomes a a state rather than mm. you know, it becomes a stage of your development, a part of your being, yeah. kind of like a, an acquisition almost. Like it's just in you. It's like in your cells. It's in your being. You yeah. can ju- it just happens. Which it sounds mm. like that's what's occurring for you. That that integral embodiment of it, which is really beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel. I feel. I. That was my always my main focus, you know. Like, I was staring down the the, you know, uh, the barrel of of doing medicine, and I actually was interested in psychiatry. So I was kind of looking down the barrel of ten years of solid study, you know, to achieve what I, you know, what I what I thought I wanted, and and but with that came a whole heap of security, came a whole heap of all of the things of the world and, and I was, you know, twenty something years ago in Perth, um, growing up here, such a material reality, you know, the, there's much more awareness now of of other things, you know. And 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 I just felt like everyone was trying to achieve their own security, mm-hmm. you know, and and I just realized that in my life I wanted to become wise rather as a first principle rather than rich. You know, and and I realized that any any extra security I had would 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 actually take away from my wisdom, mm. and it was like it was like that situation where everyone's walking this way, and I just stopped, right. turned around, and walked the other way, and go, I'm going to go for trust, and I'm going to go for insecurity, mm. <laughs> and just see what happens. You know, and so I kind of feel like I tackled the 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 the, the vast deep kind of philosophical uh, life stuff with my life. And now for me it's more about how to step into the world with that and how to live that authenticity with a life, with a daughter, with a partner, with whatever, you know, things that come in my life and move, you know. It's, mm-hmm. it's how, to, how to authentically live this. I know what the authentic thing is, mm-hmm. but like to actually kind of grow those roots and branches into the world and just mm. plug in and be connected and be a source of goodness in this world. It's a mission, it's you know, mission. And, and some of my branches I don't have. I'm just like, how do I grow that one, you know? Yeah. 
you know, conditioning from my family and different belief systems mm-hmm. and stuff. So it's kind of, you know, it's a long, slow process, but I, I enjoy the, the, the way. So Yeah, so do I. I mean, you've got a daughter. How old's your daughter now? Uh, she's 19. Yeah. Yeah. So how have you found integrating this deep mystical part of your being that's so alive, that's so a part of your way of operating in the world with how are you finding it so far? And then <laughs> care- caretaking and raising a daughter and just how are you finding it so far managing being in the world but not of the world? So the yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, she was a major part of bringing me into the world. Right. You know, it was like like my career took off just at the same moment that that my that that I had my daughter. Right. You know, and I was twenty six when I had her, so you know, it was kind of like I was like I was like, whoa! I was still staying up late playing music and jamming and concerts and gigs and you know, and then in, and then in the in the in the morning, my mum couldn't get up usually, so I'd get up and you know be like walking the pram, and it was like this <laughs> kind of like. You know, there was, you know, as you know, as a parent, it's like it does absorb all available space. And mm. and it was so all the bits where my ego could have lifted and I could have just gone like, yeah, mm. would promptly followed by her waking up crying. Right. Or, <laughs> you yeah. know? So it was kind of like my life's kind of kept me, kept my feet on the ground, mm-hmm. you know. No, um, I do because I can totally relate. I, before Soleil was born, I had a few years of uh, – being very much single and just being so deep in the yoga path and regular trips to India and practicing for hours a day and spending most of my time in nothingness or everythingness, just totally not identified with this meat suit. And and teaching, practicing, teaching, practicing, it was just all yoga and it was a beautiful time. It was a beautiful time. And then I met Joe who was over here taking care of her mom who was unwell. And um, we just had a direct mystical experience that we were meant to bring kids into the world. Wow. And um, it was just so, such a blissful moment of seeing Soleil and a blissful moment of connecting with Joe. Mm-hmm. We both had no idea, similar to that experience, I think, uh, of what you were describing of being on uh, on beach, just like, wasn't intending for it maybe but it was happening and yeah. you're ready for it and it all just aligned so there <clears throat> joe and i were together we weren't even together yet that was the crazy thing with in terms of logic logicality <laughs> <laughs> rationality and um we weren't even together yet had this deep mystical experience of holy shit we're meant to make babies together and it was so wow. blissful and so undeniable a month later she was pregnant with soleil Wow. moving here from LA and um, and that so quickly uh, brought into action exactly what you were talking about just then, like that integration and finding the roots and finding my feet. And um, it, it was great. It was challenging because straight off the bat, we uh, her mom was passing away of cancer. Her dad was uh, going deeper into Alzheimer's. It was just like poof, in into the world. Wow. And um, so such a blessing it was so intense and there yeah. was a lot of suffering and a lot of just intensity around us but uh it felt like those few years of really going deep into the soul or pure mm. awareness of nete nete i'm none of this mm. and then into these intense beautiful relationships but also really intense relationships was um such an awesome moment to practice exactly that of being in the world but not of it and it got me again and again <laughs> yeah 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 well it's like the, the the crucible of life yeah and that that thing that you know you had that run up of all your years of yoga and practice and you know and then you, you just went wham mm-hmm. bam and you just kind of you entered this you know you had this mm-hmm. long momentum of you know and it's like okay now it's time to integrate all mm-hmm. this stuff and and apply it in, in the real world. And you know? didgeridoo, man. I, uh, when uh, Joe was first pregnant with Soleil, we took a trip up to uh, Kakadu and um, I bought uh, the, that didgeridoo is upstairs, the particular didgeridoo I bought in Kakadu. And um, I hadn't played didgeridoo. It just sat there until Soleil was born. And um, I started to have the urge to pick up the didge and I wasn't practicing as much. So what I would do 
that's how I initially started to learn the technique. Not that I'm great at it, but I find the the therapeutics of it and uh-huh. how how powerful it is. Yeah. It came about from having Soleil on my lap. And I think in retrospect, like I was craving a practice because I didn't have time to mm. get on the mat during that stage. I didn't have time to do much like formalized practice, but I was like, all right, let's let's do this. And it would soothe her. Yeah. That constant ohm, that vibration, and yep. the, probably her feeling my breath as well. Yeah. And my body moving. And um it was incredibly deep just yeah. getting in touch with that ohm machine of the didge yeah. and feeling it soothe her. And it was fulfilling my need to keep like prana flowing and sound flowing. Mm. And that's how I started getting into the didge actually. Wow, that's yeah. so good. Yeah. Yeah, there's a, look, there's a remarkable similarities. Like if I do a solid, like, you know, 90 minutes or two-hour vinyasa practice and go pretty hard, the way my body feels after is pretty similar to the way I feel after a 90-minute wild marmalade set. Right. You know, yeah. uh, and, and, and even though I have done yoga on and off my whole life, in the last years I just found that if I, if I do the more yoga I, I do the better my ditch playing is, Mm -hmm. you know, and it, and, and it's amazing how like sometimes even, you know, I can, I can, I can be on tour, have not done a lot of yoga, have, and feel a bit sore from airplanes and carrying stuff and whatever. And then, and then feel like, God, I could just do with a solid practice, but then I've done a gig instead. And Mm -hmm. I just go like, whoa, it's wow. How related are these practices? You know, there's just, you know, I'm fascinated, right? Because, uh, because well, my 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 dad was a geologist, and his speciality of knowledge was Northern Western Australia. And him, and then him and his friends were like, "Hold on a minute! It was joined to India. Then sh- shouldn't mm. this shouldn't this just all of this knowledge we have just carry over into India?" And then he was uh, he and then he went over to India, and he had an interest in Indian spirituality, and he also would. Um, he would spend time with, you know, in India with the, with the, the, as a geologist, you know, because of his knowledge and, and I, and I, and I, I as his, as his son, um, have, you know, a different, you know, my, my style of mining is, is my inner mining, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mining my inner gold, you yeah. know, is my mining for the riches. Yeah. yeah. Is, is like, a, is, is what I, is what I came out of it. But interestingly enough, I, I'm I'm also investigating the similarities in my life between Indian mysticism and you know Indigenous Australian culture, you know, mm-hmm. because they share threads and there's they share a lot. There's similar. There's, mm-hmm. there's these crazy similarities totally. that have differentiated so much over all of the years by the same roots. Yeah, it's, it's super interesting. Super interesting. Um, I mean, experientially feeling what it feels like to play the didge, especially for an extended period, it does go straight to the central axis. That Mm. vibration of mm, is creating the exact same vibration in the pineal gland, in the pituitary Mm. gland, in the upper palate, and then through the central axis and your nervous system and everything that pranayama, like breath, Mm. breath work of yoga, and what all the yoga exercises are designed to do is to wake up the Sushumna Nadi, wake up and clear and tune up the central axis. And that's what the Dij is doing. And, I mean, especially the way you do it. I mean, when you do a wild marmalade set, you are – it is supercharged. I mean, yeah, uh, it, it's yeah. a full-on full on arena of vibration that you create. Yeah. And to be the – body that's doing that i mean yeah. everyone's feeling it i've witnessed people go from kind of just a normal state to like people just losing their shit and yeah. going and having peak experiences like yeah. it flow um uh, when did wild wild marmalade play it flow the right. year before last yep. and um yeah the amount of people that, that shared <laughs> that, that that was their peak experience and the yeah. amount of people that shared that was the most peak experience that ever ever experienced yeah that. it's profound yeah yeah look i i'm uh uh i speculate about this a lot recently mm-hmm. in the last years because uh, basically um i back on that beach uh, back on on beach mm. i realized a method and i've 
named that method didgeridoo pranayama. Right. And it's because basically my whole approach to playing didge is fundamentally based on Indian mysticism, you know, and it's based on a, on very simple units. And I basically started with originally when I started playing the didge, um, I banished any ambition from my playing. There was never any end point that I wanted mm-hmm. to reach and and I only played when the sound, when I played the sound, it was entirely fulfilling of itself. Mm-hmm. There was no uh, need to be anything other than what it was. And my, my, my rule, it has to be fun. It has to feel good. So, and then the next step was to, to have a rhythm that had one exhale and one inhale mm. and one exhale and one inhale. And basically the first few years of my playing, I just repeated that. So what started as being an e- a bar, a space, mm. you know, an inhale, a bar, and a space became a whole sound. That's you know how I learned to circular breathing, and then and then it just my essence was simple. But I repeated it in es- such a simple essence for so long that it became it just when it, it fractalized and became all kinds of different mm. rhythms. You know, I mean, I studied rhythm as well later on and. Stuff, but the, but the thing is, I'm primarily I'm using the power of the breath to engage my primal being, mm-hmm. and then I bring to the table anything that is real in my life that I want to resolve, any situations, and I, and and I burn, yeah. I burn my my the all the feelings around them, and that's my energy source. So I'm undergoing a real process of human transformation when I play, I'm dealing with my shit Mm -hmm. and I'm engaging the rawest, realest feeling elements of my being as well as the other elements. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of levels, but the energy source is my primal man. And, and when I, when I play from that place, it activates people in a primal way. They just go like, well, I don't know why I'm dancing, but I am. I mean that gig at Flow was off the hook. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I, I just People fell in were love with losing it, going wild and blissful. It was absolutely insane mm-hmm. and and so energetic. And, and you did admit that you were working through. Like I think you said quite a bit of anger or something, and could I, I definitely could feel just such power. Yeah, such power. And I mean. Yeah, really credit credit to for being uh, honest with that and using like the, mm. the shit of life. Yeah. Grist for the mill, Ram Dass would say. It's like yeah. fuel for your awakening. And then when you create that, own, that, that transformation in yourself, you give everyone this kind of unspoken permission to do it, which I saw in person just to see people oh, yeah. lose their inhibitions. And I mean- I don't think many people were on drugs. It was a drug-free event. Yeah, yet everyone looked completely high. Uh, people, yeah, people. <laughs> that's what I love, man. I, like flow, flow was is just such the bomb festival. Mm-hmm. Everyone's just so high on yoga and the good energy, mm-hmm. and you know all the different workshops, and you know it's it's like a you you don't it only take you down if you'd had something. If you know what I mean? Yeah, it's just right. like it's I like. Do. You know, and that for me is kind of like, um, you know, because I've played, you know, festivals like Boom or whatever, like in some large stages around the world. Mm. And, and you know, you always kind of have this sense of, oh, this kind of rapport or whatever with the audience. But like for me, that, that was one of the most <laughs> lucid gigs ever because people were like just howling and <laughs> jumping around and it was just so raw and so primal. And so alive, mm-hmm. you know, and, and at the end of the day, um, you know, even though I might be processing my own, you know, emotional world, what I'm processing it with is this kind of clean energy from mm-hmm. the inside. Yeah. And that's, you know, and that's that's why I started teaching the Didgeridoo Pranayama workshops. It was like, hold on a minute, I've got this breath system. I've been using it 25 years in every concert and every time I play the Dig. Every time I, you know, I've, I've never, everything we do in Wild Marmalade is improvised mm. because it's riding on the wings of a true experience. Mm. 
So like as we fly through all of these experiences, and some of them are soft and gentle and some of them are, are wild and, you know, and it's, you know, it's like the sea. It's like some days it's calm and some days mm-hmm. it's, there's a storm and that all happens in one set, you know. So it's kind of like, and I'm like, wow. And and then recently, and we did, we ran one together, mm-hmm. the the flow om, yeah, you know, last yeah, the, year. the The flow goes on. The flow goes yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> you suggested that, and that landed. And that was great. The flow goes on. <laughs> Yeah, it was wonderful. And was we so- could go next time the flow goes om and om. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> this December, get ready, the, everyone. The 10th one would be the flow goes om and om and om and om. That's <laughs> all it does. <laughs> yeah, that was amazing. I think, mm. it, I mean, I know it's a great technique. Mm. And I think um, as you keep refining it and even using the. Um, the, I think we spoke about it before, you, uh, refining the dialogue to make people even more comfortable to invite the transformation that you naturally do mm. of like penetrating their their anger, their frustration, their mm. doubt with the sound, with the breath. Yep. And that is, it's so powerful yeah. because um, so much of our society, we've been socialized to um, just hire those kind of messy parts of ourself and contracted parts of ourself. And uh, once again, it just leads to this dullness of being and this kind of ignorance mm. and to teach people to put sound and breath into all that stuff. It's so simple. It's such such a simple yeah. technique. It's really beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's fascinating. I feel like I've been built for this because, yeah. you know, I, I, I might – we had a padded room in the house when I was a kid. The primal screen. A, where the primal, you know, where, where my mum would see clients who who needed to really do deep emotional mm. work. And 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 before that she was a rebirther and that was in the lounge room and all the doors were shut and, you know, and there's been all this whole therapeutic thread, you know. And, and I've kind of like um, had – that going through my life, and I would just say that I, that that I've sort of found my, you know, I guess at the end of the day, maybe it's an Australian trait. We just kind of do our own thing, mm-hmm. which is like some kind of crazy hybrid of everything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, and at I the end of the day, I'm kind of into this power of breath in the way that. It can just um, stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system and create uh, um, a, a, an effortless way of, of acting, you know. And and so even though I have got a whole bunch of different awareness um, around emotion and around, you know, all the different things to do with feeling and expression of feeling, I actually – love to run the pranayama workshops so that it's um it's not an emotional expression place right. but a way to to cultivate uh energy um and stimulate our parasympathetic nervous system mm. and it makes people light up yeah you know and so i kind of shake it around because mm-hmm. i kind of because people come who do a lot of emotional work and stuff mm-hmm. and i can see them going into the feelings you know and 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 I kind of move the group so that so that it's not uh, a place to be like you know in the full expression of those feelings, right. yeah. Um, and uh, but a way to to allow all that energy to move through, and to allow the the parasympathetic nervous system to be energized, and that and that um yeah, it's kind of like my the for me it stems back go all the way through my adult life back to med school. You know what I mean? Mm. I go like, hold on a minute. I studied all of this in medicine, right. you know. Full circle. Yeah. And so like now I sort of all my explanations of things actually come back to medical, some medical information. That's and, so cool. And stuff. So I'm kind of like. all a part of it. Yeah, yeah. It's this crazy kind of hybridization of everything. Mm. And, and you know, I also use Qigong in the workshops now when I run them and stuff. But anyway, yeah. I, I look, I mean, I also got to say I loved collaboration we did because 
um, you know, I just some of your asanas and the way you integrated the breath and and, and it was just so right on, mm-hmm. you know, and so uh, in a fluid way, mm-hmm. um, hitting hitting the moment, you know, because the mm-hmm. the moment uh, is an is is an ever changing thing, and 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 I, I love that you know meeting that we had. I was just like, this is right on. Yeah, that one felt completely right on. I look forward to continuing that mm-hmm. yeah i mean every every collaboration we've done has been completely different in its flavor and its intensity all of it I, I i look forward to seeing where it goes yeah me too yeah and dream <laughs> drone is your other project yeah what is that how, how's that all going yeah so dream drone is originally the sound um it came out of the one time i had aya and and you know, basically uh, f- downloaded from the cosmos in that moment, another style of playing didgeridoo. In a way, like my original style, which is kind of it, the the full rhythm, is like the, the didgeridoo pranayama style. Mm. Kind of is one style, and then dream drones another style. You know, and that's long drones, no rhythm. Mm. It's kind of the sound goes. Does all this crazy? Even you could just do that, and it'd be a <laughs> keep going. <laughs> That's great. Anyway, um, yeah, and that's and and what I f- what I found is that sound uh, influences consciousness, and it provides this a space for non ordinary experience through vibration. And and Dream Drone's a project that's been going for ten years now, and and uh, there's now a few of us that collaborate together. Uh, Gambira, who sings, she's an Arnhem Land uh, woman, mm-hmm. Jungle songstress. Um, and there's John, who plays Yidaki as well. Who plays, um, we play the sound of hemp mm-hmm. digits because they have, which John designs and makes, mm-hmm. and and they have uh, very um, aligned harmonics. So. Uh, yeah, it's quite incredible the frequencies that are coming out and it's basically we run events in darkness or near darkness with people on the floor in the same kind of genre as sound healing, you know, um, except for we don't really use uh, much words or we kind of look at it more like an experience, you know, um, just in the sense that uh, we we like people to, to come with without any uh, expectations, you know, because expectations can be one of the things that gets in the way. So, Heal me. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> rather than come for healing, you just say, hey, come and have, have an experience, you know, because a lot of sometimes things do happen that are in a healing realm and other times it's more of a consciousness sure. realm, which is more my personal interest. Mm-hmm. Like I, I'm fascinated by what it is to be human and totally. – and, and 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 I want to provide places through sound and through breath that uh, allow people to have the non-ordinary experiences and the mm. mystical experiences because they are underrepresented in our lives and yet they are part of us. Mm. You know, that is part of the totality. Being human is to is to have awesome mystical experiences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of my first real mystical experiences was in India. I uh, went to this first trip to India, very much uh, a power yogi and obsessed with mastering very demanding physical poses and all the arm balances and so on. And uh, I had total resistance to uh, all this sound work we were doing. We were doing a lot of kundalini kriyas and a lot of mantra and a lot of just vowel repetition, ma, 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 just for like half an hour or just humming for an extended period. And this one moment, even though I was totally resistant and uh, didn't want to participate, we were doing Brahmari Pranayam, just fingers over the eyes and thumbs closing the ears and just humming over and over again. And it was one of the most blissful experiences I've had. Even in my resistance, it still 
this primordial sound still had an ability to mm. penetrate my resistance and my mind and my body. And it was a complete, it felt like a complete release of everything, mm. all tension, all stories, everything. Yeah. And it was just sublime bliss. And that really has continued on. That's one of the main practices I do is just humming. Right. Uh, but I can feel in people if they haven't, um, uh, had that kind of experience or just can't hear or feel the sound. Um, I mean, it's still doing something like I can reflect on Ben, even in my resistance, it's still yeah. woke me up in a way. Yeah. Um, but it's so subtle, but even in its subtlety, the sounds have an ability to, yeah. to surpass our willpower and our intentionality. So it's, it's really beautiful that you just leave it open for an experience because it'll do whatever it's going to do. If one mm. is in a kind of ripe experience, it's just the right time and place and karmically, energetically, they're ready just to release into a blissful uh, connection to the heart or whatever. It'll just happen. Sound has that ability to just get past all those layers of, of mind and body and, um, yeah, that that particular moment has continued this deep. That's why I'm surrounded by all these Aum, Aum machines, the tempura <laughs> there, the didgeridoos there, the bowls there, the drums over there. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> they're Drones. just, it's, it's so powerful. And with mm. all this noise in our modern day, all these EMFs of Wi Fi and Bluetooth and radio stations galore and yeah. podcasts galore, <laughs> and it's so easy to buy into um, this whole smorgasbord of of distractions and then to come back mm -hmm. to mm, yeah. it can be like a reset back to who we yeah. truly are. So those experiences are invaluable. Huh? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah. It feels like the more complicated and electrical and technological, you know, it, it all goes that um, the need for the other polarity also is growing, yeah. you know, and, and the need for to just come back to our simple human selves, you know. And it's funny because often when we stop, we can't even stop, you know. We're still going on some level. Our mind is racing or whatever or the next problem is entering our mind. And, you know, and, and I find the things that I do like with Wild Marmalade and with Dream Drone, you know, they, they have this kind of thing where they kind of get you, you know, and, and, and I, I feel it like a, like a, how, how, a, you know, um, a radio broadcasts someone's voice mm. and it, and their voice is put onto a, a longer wavelength, um, radio wave and then sent out through, through, you know, distances. Um, and then the, the long wavelength of the, the, radio wave is taken out and you're left with the voice and the listener listens, you know. Mm. So in the same way, I feel that this is exactly the same as a, as a musician and mm. particularly as a didgeridoo player, because here's your long wavelength and, and the, the voice is you, the voice is, is, is the totality of Stuart or the totality mm. of Psy is, is getting, you know, I'm in my practice doing my, work doing my spiritual work doing my life work and and then i'm just i'm just playing and it's <laughs> contained inside the the sound and the sound hits you yeah and vibrates you right and the inner journey that's going on is conveyed you know <laughs> yeah. and then we're and then the beauty is that when you have a hundred people or a thousand people or ten thousand people the, the experience just gets stronger yeah, and stronger yeah. and stronger and stronger, you know, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like, and so, and so you get that kind of group resonance, yeah. you know, and, and you, and it, and it just gets you, you know, I know from the big, the bigger dream drones, it's just the more the merrier, you know, the, the more there are, the more this kind of collective energy just comes in, you know, it's the difference between it a concert with a thousand people or, or, or 10 people, yeah. if you know what I mean? It's kind of like, I mean, maybe you have more fun if there's 10 people and they're your mates, but, but there's <laughs> something about this collective energy. And, and I, I, I just love, I just love how, 
um, how freeing it is, it is for us, um, to have a collective experience. And, and that is some kind of need for us, you know, as I humans agree. to, you know, it's like a good yoga class, mm-hmm. you know, everyone's there together and you're all in the asanas mm-hmm. and, you know, there's well, it's lots- even measurable. Like, have you heard of the Heart Math Institute? No, they're, they're, that's one of their primary focuses is measuring that transmission. And uh, they've been able to measure the electromagnetic Whoa. frequency of when people get together yeah. and get into the heart. Wow. And it's such a powerful frequency. Wow. Like it goes off the charts in terms of its measurable potency. Yeah. And then they, they've also gotten interested in when there's been like mass catastrophe, like 9-11 and the, mm. the, the, where there's been just intense heartbreak and intense sadness and that, that kind of vortex of mourning, that vortex of sadness has a particular frequency as well. So they've gotten mm. interested in facilitating the, these big uh, frequencies of, of heart, which yeah. is what you're doing, which is what these heart-based festivals are doing. And, yeah, I, I think we need – more platforms for that for us to get together and and be in community yeah like you said we're yeah we i think we naturally yearn for that from our from our tribal days of you know a whole village helping to raise a child yeah Yeah, that's pretty uncommon now Mm. especially with our walls and whatnot Mm. um so i think we're yearning for that that heart-based community yeah 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 Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. It's, I, I think it's a complicated world that it's hard to see the simple things sometimes because there's, you know, not because it's like the, it's like I always feel like, um, you know, the answer is like matter and the, the question is like, is like matter and the answer is like antimatter. And when they boom together, you don't have a question and you're actually no. peaceful for a second. <laughs> if you know what I mean, so yeah. it's kind of like it's like in this way with our lives, we we kind of a we can be quite skew if you know, and and want lots of answers you know, but actually somehow some of those answers can be just answered through through just finding ways to be happy on the inside you know, so that those questions just actually vanish or aren't even questions anymore. Totally. You know, well, so. we see that again and again, that, that insatiable hunger and, and it's so seductive to buy into it, mm. even though we know that money cannot buy happiness and that next car cannot buy happiness. People tend to keep trying mm. until they just run, burn the candle from both ends. And I mean, we yeah. just keep seeing it, people killing themselves, even though it looked like they had the, the perfect life. Yeah, and we're as a culture, there's still a center of gravity where we're collectively looking for the answer with our thinking mm. mind. We're looking for the happiness in how others see us, and I think with the social media thing, it, there's a polarity of that getting thicker and thicker. Mm. This kind of looking for that next like, looking for that next praise, looking for that next thing of approval. Yeah, and and the, there's the other polarity of uh, of people going beyond that into who they truly are. So there's an interesting evolute right now of like this kind of techno, technological uh, progression, you could say, that's just going. I mean, it's just speeding up more than we can even comprehend, I think. Yeah. And then um, this yearning to just get in touch with what's real and, Uh, one of the struggles for that is you can't we can't really get in touch with what's real until we get quiet enough until that parasympathetic response occurs yeah. and we our heart rate comes back down mm. and the breath gets elevated and we're finally mm. here yeah but we can't really try to be present though i think that's one of the issues <laughs> as well like people try try to focus and like yeah try think, to be present and like yeah i think you've hit the nail on the mm. head there because it's yeah it's like yeah, and again, that's more the the neti neti thing of, yeah. of of instead of having more questions, you just kind of identify with things a bit less, mm-hmm. you know, and step by step, less and less. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just yeah, it's it's uh, it's like being a you know a wound up 
coil that needs to unwind mm. just to just to be. And right. you know, I just yeah, I guess my you know thing for 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 humanity is is just to be able to just uh, relax more and trust in who we really mm. are, you know, and who we are inside ourselves, you know, and just to be like, yeah. <sighs> Relaxed. Totally. And it sounds so good. <laughs> yeah, I, I've, had, I've had many people admit that they're legitimately, well, not le- it's not legitimate, but they buy into the, the fear. They're scared of not being motivated to get up for work the next day if they... Ah, enough uh, and drop their fear and drop their neuroses. Yeah. So can you speak to that a little bit? Because, I mean, you've got projects galore. You, you're very yeah. efficient with what you do mm-hmm. and you're touring and your projects and you're producing of albums and you're very productive. Mm. That, that, that ability to get heaps of shit done yeah. without it needing to be so motivated with, from neuroses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, 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 I guess I'm a, I'm a very, um, kind of black and white person in that, like I either, either work or I don't work, you know, I'm either in a, in a achievement cycle and that can go for days sometimes, or I'm in, or I'm in a, I'm in, in a more creative cycle. And, you know, I realized that, you know, when I studied at uni that I was like, you know, all those, you know, those years of, of end of high school and uni, I was very um, focused, very much in my logical brain, very, you know, I was, you know, and, 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 and um, strong like that. But I, I can in another way go like, but then my creative brain staged uh, one hell of a rebellion and then I just went, I'm going to live in the moment and I'm going to go. You know, so my way to achieve balance is is to allow both of those states fully in my week, mm. you know. And and the way I look at it is we have two systems in our body. We have our sympathetic go um, order uh, system achievement, you know, we have that system and then we have the parasympathetic system which is more in tune with spontaneity. It's about rest, you know, and so I kind of honour whichever one is 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 moving in me, you know, mm-hmm. and and what what I what, why do we have two systems? Why would that be? Well, there's two systems in the cosmos, you know. There's a system of order, and there's a system of chaos, you know, and and it's really interesting. And I invite everyone that listens, you know, to this and to just reflect for a moment on their lives and go, all right, <clears throat> what random things did I do that in my life that really affected what happened in the rest of my life, you know? Mm-hmm. And because I reflect on that, I reflect and I go, wow, that time I threw my life to the wind, that time I did that random thing, that time I went right instead of left, that time were all really important moments in my life and they introduced me to the next characters or the next things or the next, you know, even when I was in India, you know, before I had my experience with the didgeridoo and everything, I was at an ashram doing what I do in India and and my girlfriend at the time said, I don't want to be here, you know, and I said, no, I want to be here and she was like, well, I want to go and then I just thought, well, I'll go, you know, and I I did something that was out of my patterning, you know, whatever your patterning is and so I feel like, allowing space to be random and when 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 i when i do the didgeridoo pranayama workshops it, we're consciously cultivating energy in our parasympathetic nervous system and then i always invite people to go and have a random day you know to just go and leave and you know and when we do that we align with this other system mm. which to me is not random to me, it's a higher level of order that we just can't comprehend, you know, and that's why it's random. 
because it's not random, man. It's just not. <laughs> the The probability of the things that have happened to me in my life when I look at them that have defined things was so absolutely improbable, you know, yet they happen frequently. So how can that be random, you know? So I would just say that, Get out of the way. that makes space for you to be in an uncompressed environment with no expectations mm. and nothing on your shoulders and allow yourself to be spontaneous because that is a huge part of who we are and, and that can just help resettle this balance mm. between our two sides, between the two parts that we have and, and, and help us work, walk towards wholeness in a simple way. Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> now, good discourse. <laughs> that is my discourse for the day. I would like to invite you to come back another day. <laughs> yeah. Please. That's it. <laughs> Do you think there can be a balance between both in which you are in the flow, in which doing and being unify, in which all of these polarities completely merge and and not not just when our eyes are closed and we're in meditation or playing the dig, but like open eyed in the moment with conversation, with our eyes open, looking and doing and creating. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, we can. And and uh, and uh, you know, I I see it in you, and I see it in some of our f- mutual friends that we have. I just go like. And it's possible to to really rip it up with mm-hmm. life and just absolutely do good work mm-hmm. and have a ball and be connected and be compassionate and loving and all of those things. You know, I'm 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 a optimist. I'm a believer. I'm I am like will never be. Um, you know, will never accept that we are less than absolutely awesome. You know, because we we are divine beings. You know, we are. Uh, you know, cons- we are uh, consciousness is the is the bedrock of of the, the cosmos. My experiences show me that, and and we tend to undervalue what we true have truly have. You know, our mm-hmm. true potential, and if, you know, I you know, I, I feel, um, you know, I, I don't really even think about this stuff. Too much because I just kind of believe in being me and responding in however I am because wherever I'm at, it's where I'm at, and I'm I'm not going to try and be somewhere else. But but I, I I'm I'm absolutely sure of our amazing mm-hmm. potential to be and to have harmonious um, existence and to create change change on the on the microcosm that affects the macrocosm. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> right on. <laughs> what more needs to be said? But we might as well while we're here <laughs> keep going, <laughs> keep going down the rabbit hole. So that beauty, that magnificence, that optimism. What about the shit in the world right now? Like the crazy wars going on and the crazy political systems and whatnot. I remember. Um, I've definitely had phases where I'm like, no, nah, I got to just not watch the news, not flip open the newspaper, not pay attention to all that shit. Mm. And, um, and then just of recent times, I've found it useful. I, f- I feel like a little kid kind of going, what is this all about? Like a kind of curiosity has sparked up again after years of not nah, that just just focus on what's ultimately real but i could see that that was a little bit of a spiritual bypass i was den- yeah. I, I was uh ignoring without really realizing i think it was a necessary stage but mm. i'm kind of glad i came out the other side i was kind mm. of ignoring the shit in the world in order to get into a deep optimistic peaceful space which i'm really grateful for it felt mm. like a necessary time of connecting just with ultimate truth and connect with the heart and just deepen my own inner practice. But now I'm getting curious as to, I think because of Ram Dass's work as well, one of his practices is to 
put the shit of life on the puja table as well. So mm-hmm. we've got like the things we worship and the beautiful aspects of life and the optimism. But then next to all that is like Trump mm. and, like, <laughs> um, or someone that's broken your heart that maybe there's still a bit of like resentment for any of that. Like that, that feels like a, not to get inundated and like obsessed on the shit and like, uh, transfixed on it but to bring what you're talking about the optimism the love the peace and then like observe if i've got any anger at all or sadness at all when i look at that and to Mm. put love into that like meta just bring the heart into that which I, I I wouldn't go there before. I'd go like, nah, that gets me tight. Nah, that gets my heart closed. Nah, that gets me negative. So I'll just pff, put yeah. it over there and divide it. And it was a subtle, subtle mm. practice of separation. Mm. Yeah, well, I would say that I don't, you know, I definitely don't comprehend the mm. full, you know, problems yeah. of the world. Um, uh and I I know people that that follow everything, mm. and you know, and I know people that don't follow anything. Um, at the end of the day, what difference? What you know? What makes a difference is how you act and how you respond. Yeah. And and for me, that for me, it's like. Um, we all have different, uh, we all have a different kind of thing that we want to take on in, in, in life, Mm -hmm. you know, and I'm, I'm very much someone that wants to, in my moment, in my day, make the decision that makes the best, you know, impact in my, in, in, in the world around me, which is, you know, and, and, I've been very much one about, you know, none of my, all my projects are pure sound without words. So you can't really agree and disagree, <laughs> yeah, you know. And that's I, great. Yeah, so you kind of, you know, and you can go to any country in the world and have any number of people who could believe completely different opposite things all dancing together or all having an yeah. experience on the floor together. So uh, I'm I'm very... I'm not a very political person. I'm not very, um, I'm not, I'm just not like that. Mm. I just kind of, I, I like to be on a page, um, make my decisions with the wisdom that I can and, and bring, you know, an effect change in the world how I see it. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not perfect. And, and, you know, I, 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 I don't always keep, track of the news i but i do you know occasionally flip in and out and 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 i i see i see the great problems going on um you know and and yeah i just i make the best decisions i can so you know yeah beautiful yeah i mean i think that is some of the best advice like focus on what's directly around us for starters and yeah, really do the inner work as well. Otherwise, what's the point? Yeah, if we're if we're not clear within, and our direct relationships are a mess, <laughs> what's the point in focusing on politics or focusing on the other stuff of the world? And if we can, well, some people are very much that way inclined, right. you know, and they have skills in that mm. in that way, and yeah. you know, and and you know, I know a number of people. In, in politics doing f- fabulous work mm-hmm. and really tackling those issues and I believe in those sure. people you know and 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 so so it's just each to their own you know and um, you know it's I guess about being aware mm-hmm. you know and being having that awareness that you have because you know we all have a darkness in us. Mm-hmm. You know, and and we often want to push the darkness to be there and not to do with us. Mm-hmm. I, I feel, you know, I feel like when I speak about humanity, I, I have to speak for all of us, you know, 
and not actually speak for only the people that I like, you know. It's like it's like an, another one of my experiences in India. I, I just was like, wow, we, we were all, I kind of realized the power of the soul and that we all have this, we all, we are all beings, you know, we are, we are all, you know, and, 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 and we all have something that's impossibly valuable and an amazing, and, and an amazing and, 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 but yeah, we, we often don't realize that. So, yeah. So what? So what, what now? What is next? <laughs> Stuart, have you got more questions for me? <laughs> Let's keep going. I'm going to have a drink of water first. No, I totally agree. And when we can zoom out enough, it's all perfect anyway. Like if uh, I remember Alan Watts uh, going into this contemplation of like the madness of the world and whatnot. And if we were to create the perfect world, we would – probably create exactly what we've created because <laughs> uh-huh. it's all just working itself out. It's part of the evolution of it all. The We've all got the darkness. The, the, as much light as there is in the world, there's equal darkness until we transcend the gunas, transcend physicality, which mm-hmm. we may, but we chose to be in these bodies, into these complex stories and personalities and mm-hmm. divide but yeah, I think when we can have a, a spiritual practice that connects us to what is real, then all this, the, the, the perfection of this, of form is revealed. That it's all just this karmic trip of it all working itself out and going somewhere where mm. we, we don't even know. <laughs> yeah, but, well. uh, it seems to have a practice of resting in, mm. in awareness is... Helpful for anything and everything. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, being responsible. You're, you know, I love the word responsibility. Mm. You know, I, I, you know, your ability to respond. And, yeah, there's two things I thought of when you're saying that. Mm. One is that, that it's just, that it's like uh, our ability to respond is one thing and then, and then as far as, you know, we're all kind of born into a certain situation, and, and um, you know, I read a f- fabulous thing on uh, somebody posted recently that that you know, pain um, hangs around in family lines until it meets someone who's brave enough to feel it. Yeah, you know, yeah. and I and I think that for me would mm. would 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 be how I would say um, the work, you know, a big part of the work of my life mm. goes, you know, and and my, you know, my mother was bra- uh, was very brave, you know. Um, sh- she was born in the Second World War. Uh, she was like a child for the, all those years living in London and bombs and, and all of that and then kind of wondered when she was in her 20s why she was, you know, so upset and so, you know, and then spent a whole life kind of going, oh, God, I had all of this stuff and really feeling all of the stuff passed on and, you know, and and it's not that long ago that we've come from pretty barbaric times, you know, and 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 so it's kind of like we, 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 we are working out stuff that we've been passed that is in our, in our lineage and in the way, you know, depending how you look at it, whether you look at it, from a karmic perspective of the soul or whether you look at it from, you know, a perspective of being born in this family line with these parents, whichever way you look at it, you know, you, 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 you uh, I feel like our role is, you know, I feel like one of my roles is to, has been to feel that pain and to, f- to feel that ways that I feel like I've been betrayed and to feel those impurities in the way I've been loved and to feel, that, that upset about when I was left alone and to be feel, you know, all of those things, you know, so that I don't pass them that to my daughter so that my daughter just, you know, doesn't have some of those things that I had and had to work through. And and I think that, yeah, that I, I think, you know, I guess my way for change is to is is to confront those kinds of 
problems, you know, in myself and, and have the, um, you know, and just to be like, no, it stops here. You know, it stops with me. This, this, this does not continue, you know, and to hold space for others to do that, you know, you know, and, and bring, to bring the light of awareness into the dark places, you know, and, and that thing about, uh, you know, we, you know, from doing the therapy when I was a teenager, I was like, wow, I've got this rage, you know, I got rage, you know, and rage is rage. You know, it doesn't matter who, where it comes from, you know, we all got it, you know, to some level, you know, and we're all in touch with it to some level. And some of us act out because of that wild rage and do horrible things in the world or, you know, you know, do dark stuff. And, and, and so, you know, that thing of owning, that I am human and part of all of this, you know, is also owning that I have those feelings and I have, you know, I, yeah, it's kind of, it's a, it's a wild and humbling thing, you know, and yeah, get to know the dark side of yourself. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Totally. And once again, it brings me back to uh, what we touched upon before, um, it's intense work and it, it kind of is easier initially just to sweep all that shit under the rug, just to put on a, a, a mask mm. of pretense and, and put on the mask and sweep all that shit under the rug, but it always finds its way out. It always <laughs> does. Yeah. So we've maybe sworn celibacy, which many seekers do as an attempt to sublimate an attempt to, uh, bring energy up into the holy realms. But if that's done prematurely, it'll creep out in such toxic ways. Yeah. Same with the darkness. If we pretend we don't have any darkness and we're just a light being, mm. like yeah. see some crazy shit in spiritual communities with that, yeah. that spiritual ego. Yeah. Yeah. Of like, no, nah, I've, I've done all the work. There's no darkness left. Yeah. And there might be some beings out there that truly have. Uh, I think that's for real. But uh, that spiritual ego can run rampant. And yeah. if that darkness truly isn't uh, honored and worked with consciously, fuck, it comes out in crazy ways. Mm. And there have been um, like supposed masters, you know, masters, saints that uh, you could say vertically very um, aligned, mm. like, connected to supreme realms of consciousness but then aspects of the darkness and and shadow mm. and sexuality mm. can leak out and yeah in, in crazy ways and there's so many accounts of that and um seeing that quite a bit in this kind of awakening quote unquote yeah. this collective awakening of all these communities doing lots of plant medicine and doing lots of tantra and lots of kundalini like this vertical awakeness of like it, this is it this is bliss this is who i truly am mm. but uh i think commonly it could be called like merging vertical awakeness with horizontal yeah. integration like we keep coming back nice. to yeah. of like, like um that. honoring honoring our humanness you mm. know because uh that spiritual ego can seem so uh so pretty and so beautiful, but if yeah. it, if, it, if it is indeed the spiritual ego, it can be just as toxic and like even destructive and dangerous as like other egocentric trips. Huh? Mm. Do you see much of that going on in like Byron Bay, which is a beautiful spiritual mecca? It's a great community, but do you see that kind of slippery, kind of uh, dark, <laughs> uh, delusional side of all the spirituality? <laughs> I never see anything like that. Yeah. It's all just like come on, get honest, and like bubbles, just like floating, yeah. like with like rainbows, and there's a dolphin. Is that it's it? Just incredible. It's just <laughs> like radiating, fulgent lights just emanating. Well, maybe you are one of those beings. You've no, got it's it. All light everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, of course I do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I. Yeah. A lot. You see it a lot, but yeah. you know, um, that's part of it as well. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I have various alter egos. Yeah. It's just a, how to deal with all the different situations. Yeah. 
you know, um, yeah. Because <laughs> there are these kind of like vortexes where heaps of good shit's going on, like in Byron Bay and in Bali. <gasps> Um, and LA is another one. I witnessed it there. Like the beauty that's unfolding and like Yeah. Awesome. Like Yeah. Well you quickly learn. I guess my pet <laughs> my pet love in life is is um is is how uh is you know, it's like it's like I remember being in, in Tokyo and being like I don't know, 10 stories underground and there was this woman selling coffee in a shop that was just a little bit bigger than her and I just remember how happy she was, you know, and 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 I was just like, wow, yeah. you know. And so it's not, it's not by uh, what we speak about that, uh, that for me uh, defines, you know, who someone is, you know. Because I know I know people that don't believe in any spiritual stuff at all who act completely like uh, Buddhists, like the most devout Buddhists who would believe in reincarnation, you know. But they don't even believe in reincarnation. And I know people that believe that that can talk your ear off everything about, you know. It's amazing. Like I've I remember the other day someone was we were talking about something esoteric, and 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 I had a kind of bit of knowledge of that realm and, and, and I kind of offered up a couple of suggestions because I thought it might help guide everyone in the right direction and this guy just walks in and just goes, it's like this and this and this and this and it's like this and this comes from, and everyone just went, oh, cool. And I was just like, whoa. And to me it was just such bullshit, you know. Mm. And and I was just like, you know, it's it's kind of like sometimes it's hard to get, you know, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, half ideas or truths that have been kind of I don't know. There's a lot of <clears throat> my solution. If you kind of step out of the problem, I think about <laughs> 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 that. <I keep> going, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> that every level of life, if you look at um, you know spirituality, sexuality. Um, Everything, you know, all the different levels, they're all a labyrinth, you know, and you are this central pillar of all the labyrinths, you know, and, 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 um, the more you kind of know in a certain way, the more likely you are to get lost in the labyrinth, you know. So my solution is not to know too much, you know, and not to be too obsessed with, if you know what I mean, like if I, like even though I'm into Indian stuff and if I just was like memorized, you know, the Rig Veda and was like every time you mm. had a question I quote from this, you know, 10,000-year-old text because I know Sanskrit and i am got the meta memory, you know, is that really going to give you the solution you need to your problem? Or is Sai, the Aussie guy, this goes, I <laughs> just, just cut that crap and get on with it, Stuart. Is that is that going to be the advice you need? So it's kind of like, like why not know a bit less and be a bit more authentic than know more and you know possibly get confused, you know? Because nobody's. I mean, people are fundamentally good inside, you know, and and I'm you know, but I, there are so many ways to get lost, you know, and there are so many kind of you know hidden agendas mm-hmm. and it's incredible, man. It's like, you know, the, it's like, it's, yeah, the world, the world is a, an interesting, an interesting place. So it's good to just, you know, be good in the just middle of it good. all. Be good. Be good. You're such a good person. <laughs> just loving on it all. There's Joe waving to us. Hi. The girls are coming down to say hi for those of you who are wondering about that pause. Um, the girls are waving. Hi. <laughs> yeah, totally. I mean, it's so ingrained in our culture, though, to want to know on that level of of intellect and knowing, mm. knowing, knowing it all. I remember as a kid the discomfort of not knowing an answer. Yeah. I, I, I And I remember luckily I was able to eventually – 
witness it and identify and see the insanity of it. Mm. And without me realizing it, I was doing a similar technique to nete nete. Like mm. I remember just getting sick of my like nervousness at not knowing the right answer. Yeah. And even though I could tell that it was a dickhead teacher that had a tendency to really get angry at people that didn't know the answer, which is insane, just that. Mm. Um, I, I was just starting to realize like, huh, I'm not my nervousness. Mm. And fuck, I'm sick of this nervousness. So that, I felt like that combination of doesn't matter if I don't know the answer, like, come on. Yeah. But this ingrained fear that was in my nervous system it was probably from my parents and their parents, like just this ingrained nervousness of not being right. Mm. It was, uh, and I could feel like, fuck, like I'm sick of it. And just gradually, I think it wasn't until a couple of like peak experiences where I was able to just to freaking break through it. But it's, uh, it's without a doubt, very thick in our culture that need to be right mm. and that need to know. I think it can be tricky for people to really relax into what you were just speaking of, of not needing to know. <laughs> And just well, they should just wake up and <laughs> just wake the fuck up. <laughs> but you're doing it like you're creating platforms for that without even saying it. Yeah, without like with your didgeridoo, you're saying wake the fuck up. <laughs> but without saying it, you're just creating the transmission to relax into, it. and that's really cool. Yeah, because once again, we can't really try to. That's the predicament. We can't try to mm. not know. Yeah, but I think, you know, look, the the end of the day, um, knowing bubbles up from the inside and and sometimes you can try and show someone something mm. to the cows come home and, and yeah. they won't get it and then one day they will get it yeah. because it bubbled up in them and I then they'll see. understand you, you know. Yeah. So, you know, I think it's more about allowing our natural, you know, growth as, mm. you know, as, you know, trusting that, that we are, that consciousness is expanding and yeah. and growing because it, it is. You know, if you look back over geological time from the Big Bang till now, if you believe in Big Bangs, but I like the Big Bang theory. What about flat earth theory? <laughs> are you on that <laughs> I, I think it's a fun thing to play with, yeah. with your mind, but um, uh, I'm... I definitely believe the Earth's round. Um, yeah. Sorry, I interrupted you. That felt <laughs> appropriate. <laughs> um, Keep going. Yeah. No, just that, you know, if you kind of stretch out mm -hmm. consciousness over time, you just go like, okay, you know, Big Bang, matter, and then however many billions of years later there's a cell and, and then it kind of expands and expands and expands and there is this, Continuum and and our human part is this, is a small part at the end, but but not to uh, a, a very you know a very exponential growth and and we are becoming more aware in some ways. Like if you look at Australia from twenty years ago, mm. and you look at it now, it's very different place. You know, if coming here back to Perth, you know, I think about. Growing up here, and I think about all oh, those fights I got into, mm. and it was the surfies and the bogans, and the you know, and it was like you know, <clears throat> now it's the surfies and the yogans. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> Which isn't quite as bad, is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're lessening the degree of yeah. little no. cultural, subcultural wars. <laughs> That's right. It's it's a different place, you know, mm -hmm. and people are different and there is a growth. Yeah. There just is. There just is, you know, and and you know, and there are, I know there's war in the world and there's more, 
but there's more and more bubbles of peace, you know, and there's, there are, you know, the news always focuses on the negative stuff, you know, and, and, you know, there is a lot of good stuff, Mm -hmm. you know, and there is polarities going on. Both sides are being represented, Mm -hmm. you know, and there's, there is, there is good in the world. There just is. Yeah. There just is, my friend. And it's crazy how the the horrific shit has a real fierce grace to it mm. and brings people together and jolts people into a more awake state. Coming back to the Trump thing, like mm. the amount of initial confusion and anger and frustration, even from the most peaceful people I know in America and here, um, but it's gradually becoming this conscious conversation mm. of like, this is perfect. It's shit, but it's perfect. And it's showing us where we need to wake up and mm. uh, hearing these really beautiful conversations blossoming, comparing that to when he first got elected, where, which initially you know, was a, just rage, just anger, a lot of mm. that, or indifferent, just mm. kind of not, like... Hillary was a bitch as well. She wasn't meant to get in as well. And <laughs> it was just evil against evil or whatever. There, there was kind of that, you know, mm. we were, the world was screwed anyway, um, whoever got in. And either that or anger or I didn't speak to anyone that was <laughs> pro-Trump. I should go there and speak to them as well. <laughs> but even there, it, it seems even there, there's a, a, an awakening uh, mm. that, that could it's very much under the surface, but mm. there was this kind of delusion of buying into the, uh, the the reality show of it all and the entertainment that he provides of, mm. yeah, he's going to make America great again and he's going to make the world great mm. again. And he spoke to a lot of people that weren't getting spoken to. And mm. now he's not following through, of course, and it's not that mm. simple. So it's even sparking up, it seems, a... Mm. Uh, uh, bubbling of consciousness even mm. even down there so it's very interesting how the shit of life and the hor- horrors of life mm. really have a potent beauty uh, underneath the surface this kind mm. of spiritual sandpaper that just pff, mm. uh, is part of the unfoldment like the big bang pff, just this constant pff, yeah, that that ferocity of uh, of Kali, that that kind of destruction, which is part of the the beauty as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think you got a more kind of contact with that American reality. Yeah. I know you spend time there. And, yeah, and stuff. But it's, it's kind of like interesting. yeah. You, I there. I guess you always have polarities, you know, and you always have good with bad and bad with good and 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 that is the nature of stuff if you know what i mean like yeah. like every time something you know might you know smaller scale and uh, any any time i've had bad luck it's been kind of coated in good luck if you know what i mean always you yeah. just go like oh that's shit that that happened but mm. It's good that it this and this and this and this and this didn't happen with that and yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. it's kind of like there's always this this polarity oh, and you know and and I guess concentration in some ways of like okay you know the the good collecting together and mm-hmm. the dark collecting together and mm-hmm. the playing out of this story in the in the media and the, yeah. you know in the, the the minds of the people following the the game oh no that's so bad that that mm-hmm. happened and yay this happened and you know and it's you know, we're all in this massive kind of play, which has got like 129 different channels. So, yeah. and then there's uh, another 1,272 that aren't even on the television set. So it's kind of like, you know, there is just so many places you can put your awareness, mm-hmm. you know, and, and like maybe because my name's Simon, Simple Simon, I'm kind of very simple, you know. I just put my awareness in the places that I know I can personally affect change mm. and bring goodness to the world, mm. you know. That's my thing, you know. I, I kind of, 
anything that distracts me from what I know I can put forward and put on the table. I don't, I don't, you know, I watch, I listen, I, I talk to people a lot. My main source of information is I'm, I just love to communicate mm. and I love to hear what's making you tick and what's making what you're thinking about. And mm. I, and I travel, you know, and I, like this year in Europe, three months on the road in fest, pretty much in a festival all the time, you know, mm. just, just, you know, sussing out the world. What's the world like? when you get down and you, you know, most of my knowledge is firsthand from experience or from stories from people or, you know, so I kind of have that kind of grip on reality. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't really, I I gave up telly when I was 15 and I never, I've never watched it, you know, and, and, and I've, and I don't, you know, there's a lot of things I don't, a lot of sources of information I don't, you know, I don't take on or I don't have because I, you know, I just, yeah, I think I just, that's smart. Yeah, yeah, I like I like things to be simple. Yeah, we don't have a TV in our house. Yeah. I, haven't, I haven't owned a TV in since I can remember for yeah. a long time, and it's been a necessity. I, I grew up in a household where TV was on constantly, and that was just the norm to have yeah. this kind of noise of advertisements. Yeah, and the news that mm. primarily focuses on just negativity. Mm. And uh, it it just it it trains your your frequency to be on that frequency. Yeah, and that that still is the norm. Yeah, it's it it's blows cool. my mind now to walk into a house where the TV is just blasting, and I've walked it, walked into some houses and uh, and we'll be I'll, we'll be about to do a yoga session. <laughs> yeah, right. And there are multiple TVs on. Wow. And. Uh, Sometimes I'll have to be like, do you mind if we turn the TVs off? <laughs> but that's become their norm, that 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 noise. Yeah. And um yeah. so yeah, I think it it, it can take it can be initially really uncomfortable mm. to have no noise. Yeah. Or I recall a feeling of drones like didgeridoos and beautiful Indian music. I, I actually remember a time where that was irritating. Uh, it was like, yeah, like the 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 beauty of it, the tranquility of it, was irritating my kind of entrained, yeah. like noise. Don't and, wake up my deep self. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's pretty common. Like when I observe, uh, in some platforms where there's a lot of people, this kind of humming of of the collective noise before like that parasympathetic shift. Mm. Yeah. So having practices daily that help us mm. shift, you know, even like uh, of a nighttime, even if like your whole day is noisy and you're in like a workplace with bright fluoro lights and just noise and negativity, mm. even just to have a simple because some people don't have a lifestyle like yours where it's so fluid and you can make your own. Everyone can do that. But like mm. for one that is in a really like noisy yeah. lifestyle and they come home and there's crying babies and the TVs are on and even just, okay, I've got all this noise, even like 20 minutes of everything off, darkness, maybe even just a candle light and like getting used to that quietness. Even that is huge. But yeah. I've noticed from people sharing, even that can be really uncomfortable. Yeah. Quite interesting how addictive and how used to the noise the the collective has become. So, um, yeah, those simple like get in touch with. Yeah, simple steps. Simple steps. Yeah, I was a friend of mine, actually my brother-in-law. He, um, you know, at a certain point in the day, all the technology is off and he lights candles mm. and. And it's kind of, yeah, and 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 it's very soothing for us, you know. Yeah. Firelight, and you know, I mean, historically, that's all there would have been, mm-hmm. you know, and there would have been none of these other forms of light, you know, and uh, yeah, and all that electricity that kind of wires us, and you know, but but we 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 built it all. It's all built for us. <laughs> yeah. So it, and it can all, be incredible as well. Yeah, and yeah. It, it all has this specifically. Uh, you know, it's all, it's funny. It's funny. You can look at a computer and, and, and just go, 
and and I don't know when I when I think about it, I just go, wow, that is just a whole pile of thoughts, all put together, like millions and millions and millions of them that got the metal out of the ground, that got the this, you know, it's all this kind of part of the thought sphere of our of our world, you know. So it's kind of, you know, it's we we are they are like it's like an exteriorization of of a of a part of of a part of us, you know, mm-hmm. and and a streamlined one, you know, and mm-hmm. yeah. So it's kind of like to actually strip back, um, light some candles, yeah. just chill at the end of the day or the start of the day, you know. It's like it's like with my mum, you know, who's who's um you know, visiting various doctors and, and naturopaths and stuff at the moment. She's just anxious as soon as, mm-hmm. soon as she's in the doctor's place because it's clinical and she's so l- relaxed and calm mm-hmm. as soon as she's at the naturopath's place because it smells nice and there's, you know, beautiful paintings and, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, it's just, yeah. I think it's, um, yet again, it sort of takes an experience to make a change mm-hmm. and and it takes someone to, you know, the power to black out and the kids to get the candles and, you know, and, and just, just be like, Dad, that was just so good how the power blacked out and you yeah. got the candles and, you know, it's like, <laughs> it's like, it's like that kind of thing will be etched in the child's memory. I think it's etched in mine, mm. you know, it's etched in mine from when we had blackouts or whatever, you know, so I love candlelight and I know, you know, it's all like little, it's all little, little steps you know but yeah man our minds are like they are just going mental and <laughs> yeah i'm i'm here just with the simple things yeah but i work with the complex things too so mm-hmm. yeah so can you uh share with everyone your your platforms to get in touch with you you've got wild marmalade yeah Dream so, drone so yeah share your details yeah so i have um uh, i have basically Four main projects. Uh, uh, my best known for Wild Marmalade, which is my uh, band with didgeridoo and drums as the basis of it, and that's a dance music project. It's totally improvised, and uh, it's like a kind of high energy dance experience. And then I have Dream Drone, which is a which is a well. It's not I have it. It's a group. Uh, we are all equal members, which is a sound journey project. And that is basically, um, yeah, it's this particular style of didgeridoo. And we have a woman, um, Gambia, who sings. And it's basically like like a consciousness journeying, healing project. Um, and then I have uh, didgeridoo pranayama, which is, where I teach my breathing method, um, as a, as a, you know, that I use for the didgeridoo as a breathing exercise. That's didgeridoo pranayama. And then I have as, I play solo sometimes like at Flow mm-hmm. last year. And that's, that's called, that's under my name, Sai Mullumby. And each of them is a, a website and a Facebook and an Instagram. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm around. I sort of, I still kind of work like on Instagram mainly off, wild marmalade Mm -hmm. you know that's kind of that'll be this the central axis beautiful yeah anything else you want to share with uh listening yeah i would just like to invite uh everyone to uh after listening to this to do one random thing in your next day and to contemplate the forces of randomness in the world and are they truly random let's see oh i want to finish up with one more drone of the didge yeah to sure. help yep transmit that randomness <laughs> i will here we go thanks so <laughs> oh my legs yeah it's been uh Hour and 50 minutes. It's a long seat.
Colombi. Thank you so much. Much love, everyone.